metal Division is a Sugumon bomb. Good. People thought he was in the graduate division the whole time. Uh, so if ever Does this work? Maybe not. Yeah. Better. So thanks for coming to this talk. Uh, output examples. And here I have drawn this uh, output examples is because it's easier for them. Executed on this input, it would produce the desired output. And actually, this is the goal that. Uh, That's actually a key problem in synthesis. So it overfits, it's not robust. Important for problem synthesis, and we are actually looking here. programs and more and more work is how much you know at the same time and how complicated program it actually is. All these area big co big data in fact. User, so no, nobody would actually know what was And what is, why do we want to do this and what do we gain if we actually bridge this gap?
But there is also another, another area. We could go. And overall, this work bridges the So this is, this is what the paper includes. On data in addition to program. So these are the goals. Approach is feasible and works well. So here. So first, let me tell you how I'm like this. And there is such that for the inputs produces the outputs. Typo. Maybe the input is wrong, maybe the output is wrong. We give new kind of feedback to the user. We tell the user, put like check marks and X's on the example. We can highlight example, or maybe ask for more examples. So maybe the user doesn't know whether this is correct or incorrect, and we'll figure out with more confidence that this is incorrect if we get more examples. So this is the problem statement. There is D. Now I said. D big is the set of the data set of input output examples. And so far, synthesizer mostly try to do this. They try to do arg mean of number of errors on the data set where P is in the range of P big, which is the DS. That satisfies everything, which will be the arg mean of this uh, uh, of this error. So it will be typically with this. So what if I'm able to actually specify in the DSL, just to remember the input output example? The if statement to do this, I may maybe emulate it with ends and ors and other complicated instructions. So most DSL are so too long programs must penalize such answer. So now we want the error rate or number of errors on some error metric. It wants, it wants to penalize long programs. Errors plus lambda r. use SMT solver. So if you have input output examples and we we don't. And then we can actually Restrict that the program is a program with R instructions. Number of errors. And it uses R instructions. But what else would be?
lengths of programs, I can just ask the SMT solver whether they Point six, maybe again will be answer. And so we're using this approach. Bitstream synthesizer, which was encoded in Z3 before. This uh, bit, bit vector programs that operate on, that create some bit manipulation. And so do we asked ourselves how well can it identify noise? So if we provide input output examples, so to make one incorrect example, how many more correct examples it needs so that it finds the depends on this constant lambda. And there is a good area for this lambda to be. So if lambda is around 0 0.1, after we consistently identify the incorrect example. The incorrect input output example. So we satisfied even the incorrect input output example. We overfitted. We were not robust. But after some number of examples that were correct, programs that doesn't satisfy the incorrect examples and found it correct. Of course, a very high number of lambda may not satisfy even correct examples. So that's why we don't want lambda to be high. So higher it becomes like grayish pattern. A little bit, there is a risk that we would not satisfy a correct example. Handle noise, and I showed you a synth synthesis procedure. Synthesizer. But actually handling noise, synthesizer. To look at the new class of programs, I will tell you first how do we handle. I mean, handling large data sets is the find this just computing the cost is the uh, So we have this idea, let's do it. Let's the whole day. Generator, which is, we have this synthesizer. So it's small. It not necessarily adds to us. It's a new kind of sampler that we call What we do is in a loop we call this example, let's say let's take Data set sampler given the I may find more interesting. So this algorithm just but so what is representative? Behaves like on the full data set. And I take this cost, 
maybe it's not the same. So then, area around the costs on the large data. And so we have space. There are some conditions. And in fact, in evaluation, So, so far, I told you how to handle noise and sampling. And it's actually a new way to because it actually tells you how to approximate them. Today, how these things enable us to make new class of synthesizers. Tools. So this is a new breed of tools. In order to make some predictions to make, for example, the, the So, things like a lot of predictions can be. Is the best, but these models turn out, in fact, to have very low precision. So let's look into. You do it for some script where it's hard. Which is coming from natural language processing. To completion, say it has to it has to predict this method slide. It actually takes the tokens prior to this method. It learns that by the plus name dot, the, the following prediction would be it's a bit more involved, but it actually learns this mapping from prior tokens. Like a lot of work on it. Uh, in some ways, it's powerful. In other ways, you can see in the programs, it doesn't take semantics into account. So we actually did one other kind of model in PODI 2014, which in order to predict API, so if you want to predict slice, alias analysis and type state, to find out of another location where prior location uh, where this uh, is used. If charat was caught on a method, on a model. So these models, they are probably working great in some ways, but not really. So they have one big problem, and this is precision. So maybe in some cases they would predict correctly, but if you are, in fact, this model And what we so there is this core problem: existing machine learning models that we have. We do something that program which. And then after that, once we have the program, we count or check. And 
It actually makes us learn about examples from the large code base. We remove some piece of this code. We would actually find something to condition on, say it would find. For example, what we would do is we would have some piece of code. We would who do we condition? And then we would check from the mapping to uppercase. That's what is written on the code. In observation, of course, this is synthesis. With noise. So we can again do something like So this is this cost. So, so far I told the data set sampling such that you can synthesize with large number of examples. Synthesizer. But I will tell you now about our actual system. Train it on 100,000 JavaScript files. It takes set sampler and program generator to synthesize a model. This model now on the data and using this best program. So now we took some files that we didn't use in training or synthesis or anything, but we wanted to evaluate how well do we predict back API. So we take, what we do is we actually delete some API from the code and we check how precise were we. This is API completion task. And so this is what happens with previous models and with our model. Previous models, they have fairly low accuracy, like 20%, 30%. So they're guessing one out of APIs. But the model that we synthesized is far more precise. So program synthesis with noise we actually guess about half of the APIs. And this is, these are very complicated APIs to predict, like JavaScript, it has uh, APIs that are declared in the current projects that we cannot know about them. So it's We can also explain this pet program. What it does, tokens prior to this API. So pretty interesting. Interesting completion. So I've shown you so far how to do synthesis of probabilistic models. Uh, this is actually based on and the noise would allow us to extend existing synthesizer kind of noise. A large data sets are scalable. And this work actually really bridges gap between ML and PL and actually has contributions in both areas. So with this ready to take questions. Thanks for the attention. So, the data set sampler as to when it will work or it might be the case that a few samples are enough to to determine the function that you're trying to learn. Yeah. But in machine learning, it's probably not the case, right? There the, the are multitude of uh, things, elements of some kind can affect the, the, uh, the uh, you know, the, what you would learn. So I'd be interested in knowing what exactly does the representative data set sampler do and what, what guarantees you have anything about it? Yes, so it's true that in machine learning, uh, Typically, to get the actual precision of a, data, of, a, of, a, of a model, you need to train it on the whole data set because of sparseness issues and issues like this. But the representative data set sampler would actually make sure that training and evaluation data same kind of precision on uh, um, So we, we have some guarantees that we are going to remove some programs that we looked at before. 
learning. More, we don't have more machine learning guarantees. It would be interesting if some tweak to our sampler would actually give us better machine learning guarantees as well. So, questions. Uh, first question is: uh, so when you learn from a large code uh, problems about variable names uh, or this kind, because. Uh, during the learning? This is yeah. my first question. Yeah. So to some small extent. Uh, it's 50%, right? It cannot be 100%. Because training data samples will be possible to be explained by one problem. Answered your question okay. about sparsity. Uh, Move an API. You take. Is that true that you take a, a real program from JavaScript and just uh, remove one API token, and, uh, leave the rest of a, con a program intact, and then ask the system yeah. to predict? I actually undersold here. Uh, we actually remove everything from the API to the end. Uh, f from move a everything from the position of completion to the end of the program. To the end of the program. Yeah. Okay, I see. Thank you. Yeah, hi, I actually had a quick question. When I was looking at the objective function, where there was a regularization term with lambda that took program as parameter, I was wondering why wasn't data as a parameter to that as well? So is it the case lambda is constant across the whole domain? Uh, for example, in FlashFill, we found that mm -hmm. There's no global good ranking scheme. You can't just say that the smallest program is always the best. So it's a complicated function of both the data and the program. And then yeah. actually, yeah, there's a fun separate function that learns what makes a program better than the other programs. Yeah, so yeah, we found this lambda really empirically. That's true. Uh, so one way if, you, if, if, if our lambda was not really correct is that we would need more input-output examples to explain the data. So it's not, it's not a huge deal if lambda is not the perfect lambda. But uh, so, so, so lambda depends on the data as well? Uh, or? No, lambda is a constant in our case. Yeah. Uh, so. uh, but it's not a huge deal if you are a bit off with the lambda. We would just need, I mean, we can, of course, tune for a specific application that maybe users will provide less input-output examples. But uh, it's not a huge deal if it's a bit off, because mm -hmm. the system would still work. It would just need a bit more user input to identify the correct examples. So I have a question regarding the performance of this thing. How long does it take you to get the completions that you want to display? Right? The ah, yeah. So completions are produced instantly, uh, basically. Uh, so because once we train the model, we just have a hash lookup. We run the program that is the model which is a tiny program that moves over the AST of the program, picks on what to condition and makes a lookup, hash lookup. So it's really instant, it's microseconds. Okay, thank you. So I wonder if you were to take your learned predictor and then delete all of the cases that it gets right and learn a new function from the remaining ones, could you then predict a second choice that would be right 50% of the time and so on? Yeah, we have, we have work that does this. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> 